uh, yeah, the, the initial reaction was a humanitarian one yeah. across Europe. So I think that's where he got here. And then um, the backlash, the okay. populism. So here's what's interesting to me. Okay. Um, what's interesting to me, and, and I include Ukraine in this, is that there is always with these events, when the initial images come out of people suffering in Ukraine, you had that family of four that was just hit by a bomb blast while crossing a bridge. We already talked about the Syrian uh, child. We talked about the, the, the couple at the border in the United States, children in cages. Right. Um, the, the pictures from Afghanistan when America evacuated last year. From my perspective, what happens is that the law office gets a call. People saying, we want to help. I want to help. Where's the resources? Who do I go to? I want to give money. Like, what do I do? How can I volunteer? And I was that person for a long time, right? Yeah. Before I was a lawyer, yeah. even a young lawyer was like, where can I go? Where can I volunteer? And arguably, the first four years of my career were just doing <laughs> that, trying to figure it out. And then it fades. Right. And then it fades. Right. And uh, what gets left in people's minds is that, number one, they want to help the children. Maybe they want to help the young families. There's this other persistent thing that, that kind of sticks there. Nobody talks about the men, mm -hmm. but paradoxically, only the men from that point on who are like attacking barricades or sleeping in camps are shown. Right. And then you have this flip. Then you have politicians, leaders, voices who come on. They're like, okay, that was bad, but like, we're about to be invaded. Like you guys realize that it's like two or 3 million people. And suddenly that story of the boy on the beach no longer matters because now people are coming to your neighborhoods. Right? Yeah. And what you realize is compassion's not enough. Passion, movement, activism, picking up phones, donating money, that doesn't solve this issue. Right. Arguably, and uh, my progressive colleagues might uh, disagree, it doesn't help. Arguably, it hurts things. Whenever you sensationalize any of it, maybe a nonprofit gets millions of dollars. You know, maybe yeah. maybe there's there's a golden dawn for nonprofits who come in and do this work early. Yeah, but they're not big enough or organized not to do it for a long time, except a few. Right. And they're certainly not big enough to solve the problem. And so the only thing that remains in people's minds cycle after cycle is, oh, this is still happening. Oh, these people are still dying. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give to this child, but also, oh, this is still happening. Right. Is that a threat to me? And, and, and oftentimes these, these groups get accused of being pull factors, you know, yeah. really effective hmm. NGOs, um, are accused by, uh, by the right of being the cause of these deaths in a lot of ways, because the more effectively they operate, the more people they uh, pluck out of the Mediterranean, um, the more people feel safe coming. And that's, yeah, and, and I that's, think that's horseshit. I, I, I absolutely I, I, think I, I, that's horseshit. But, so, yeah. so, so let's talk about why people come. Okay. So then there's this, so we asked, what would Europe do today? And there's this great instructive example. Okay. So in 2018, okay, 2018, Serbia, okay. Serbia says, let me check my notes. It says that they are revo rewarding essentially the country of Burundi. The poorest in the world. The poorest country in the world. An average uh, uh, GDP per person of $247. Yes. 200, you can't buy a PlayStation 3 for that. Yeah. Maybe you can as a PlayStation 4 now. The wrong person to ask. I was raised by yeah. old hippies. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> And so they say, okay, Burundi can now have visas issued to come to Serbia. And in taking this action, there's an immediate political implication. And Serbia just comes out and says it. This is because Burundi revoked its recognition of Kosovo as an independent country. Right. Kosovo, Serbia has maintained is a province of Serbia. Uh, and it's only been recognized. Uh, as a province by like Russia, the U S recognizes Kosovo as a country. It's a whole thing. Yeah. And what happens is that Burundi, which poorest country in the world, but also after its 2015 election, there was uh, a resulting exile from the country of hundreds of thousands. So it has a huge problem with refugees outside the country. It has a huge internal displaced persons program. Well, people start 
getting on planes to come visit Serbia. Yeah. And then they end up entering the rest of the United, the EU. Right. The number, but there's a phenomenon. There's a phenomenon. This goes to why NGOs aren't the pull factor. Okay. Yeah. There's a phenomenon here, which is asylum applications in Serbia for people in Burundi start going up from two to 134. Why is this important? It's important because it's not being driven by NGOs, but as a wonderful article by an independent reporter called Sasha Dragoilo shows, I read Serbo Croatian, so I get to read this stuff. Um, they're Burundians themselves, right? who come to the opportunists who come into Serbia, start putting out this rumor that you can, uh, you pay them and they get you asylum in the country. And so it's like two mm. or 3000 euros. People hop on planes, they get to Serbia and those folks who are asking for asylum, they go to jail, mm. straight to jail. But here's what this illustrates to me. If anyone is to blame for being opportunists and being a pull factor, it's actually organized crime hmm. because here's the thing. Migration, whenever there's migration from a poor country to a richer country, from a country that's in turmoil to a country that's more stable, you always, it's somebody trying to take advantage fairly, the person themselves of arbitrage of opportunity between their country and a different country. Yeah. Yeah. And Always, there are middlemen who step in and try to monetize that. Right. That's why every immigration policy in the world, one of its top three issues is always, how do we make sure to cut down on smuggling? 100%. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then that becomes a justification for increased border security and visa controls. Yeah. Um, and so I don't think it's the NGOs. I actually think that it's built and baked into the system that there's a pull factor yeah. by the system of nation states. Okay. So as soon as you have borders, there's going to be arbitrage opportunities, right? In movement, right? Again, whether sure. it's for stability or money. Now, Damon wants to abolish all borders. No, I don't at all. What I'm saying is it's not a problem that can be solved between country A and country B. If country A is poorer than country B, people from country A are always going to come to country, want to come to country B. They're going to want to stay there, right? And then country B will be illogical for them under if they can't afford to bring those people in for them to let them in. So you have to expand the net. Yeah. It's a collective problem. It can only be solved by the entire world working together. Right. What's going to happen if India's temperature goes up to 160 degrees in the summer in New Delhi, went up to 140? Yeah. What happens if it goes to 160? Yeah. What happens if you have 200 million people that need to move? Right. What happens if you have 2 billion people that need to move because of climate change? Is it going to be like, well, uh, no, Hungary's got it. Right. Lesbos. Right. Lesbos can, Harry, can, can, uh, can uh, do this. You know, right. Like we're going to put this on Lesbos. No, it's completely crazy. So it's kind of shifting it from uh, thinking about it as a series of single events and a series of single issues into a more permanent state that we need to think on more um, existential levels about how we want to deal with. Absolutely. If you just talk about immigration in terms of borders and people's reactions to new neighbors and about uh, poor, tragic, dead children on the beach and dead bodies on fences. Yeah. You are looking at the forest. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, are you looking at the trees? You're missing the forest for the trees. Been out of law school too yeah, long. Yeah, you're good. Thank you. <laughs> you're missing the forest for the trees. And we need to think about the ecology of the forest, which is really the ecology of our societies. 